What is up, Axel Alert Nation? I'm back at it again, checking out fail pilots with pan pizza. Axolotls eat their own siblings. Usually the cartoons we look at fail because of reasons such as lack of advertising or overall mediocrity, but today's cartoon failed for, uh, pretty obvious reasons. If you don't know who John Kay is, he's the controversial creator of Ren and Stimpy, and if you don't know what Ren and Stimpy is, you're probably too young to be watching this channel. The kids today don't know about this stuff, and that's for the better. They did announce a Ren and Stimpy reboot in 2020, though I think they quickly realized, let's not do that. I don't know if that reboot's still happening, and I hope not. John Kay has actually worked on a lot of different shows, mainly cartoons, but had a habit of getting fired for being absolutely insufferable to work with and blatantly insane. According to Nickelodeon, he was fired from Ren and Stimpy due to creative differences and inability to meet deadlines. What were those creative differences, you may ask? Racism. The creative differences were just racism. John Kay also began to work on the new adventures of Beanie and Cecil, and when ABC told John to tone down the weird shit a little bit, instead of saying, hey, let's work together so I can keep my job, he said, fuck it, we ball, and made it even more unhinged. The show was cancelled after six episodes. Despite his obnoxious personality, John Kay was actually active in the animation scene from 1979 up until 2019 according to his Wikipedia, and boy, it seems like anytime he touches a show, there's some sort of controversy. What a guy. Oh boy, John Kay's done it all, ignoring the, you know, grooming. He ran a blog constantly dissing on beloved cartoons like Animaniacs, Evangelion, Clone High, Samurai Jack. Um, editor may go here, and I just found this, uh, this one of these posts from the uh, blog that Pan is talking about, and I am losing my fucking mind. Please pause and just, uh, take a look at this, uh, incredible, intelligent, profound insight about Alvin and the Chipmunks from John Kay. I, I can't fucking do this anymore. I can't fucking do it. He coined the phrase CalArts style to insult the Iron Giant because he felt like it looked like a bootleg Disney movie. John worked on the original He-Man and hated every minute of it. He was on the 80s Mighty Mouse cartoon where this superhero for kids grabbed a flower, crushed it, and snorted it like an 80s TV executive. News of this was controversial enough to end up in the New York Times and other publications, though this was more Ralph Bakshi's joke and John didn't have much to do with it. Oh, and I can't find it anymore, but John was in a TMZ video where they asked him what his favorite cartoon was. To that, he said it was Cole Black and the Seven Dwarves. One of those, you can't make this nowadays cartoon. TMZ basically called him a racist for it, which I think it was just because he liked the art by Bob Clampett, Looney Tunes animator. Then again, seeing the subject of this video, maybe he took too much inspiration from it. This cartoon is a disaster. An actual disaster. I'm talking 9-11 Vietnam level of disaster. I have zero issue with edgy humor and love shows like South Park, but there's a massive difference between satire and straight up unironic racism with zero punchline. And Hee Hog is definitely in the latter category. There are so, so many things wrong with this cartoon, so. I'ma just go through it. The show starts off with Hee Hog, who is apparently a psychologist, seeing a female patient. And let me tell you, shit goes south so fucking fast. My dear young lady, I am a professional therapist. I see you strictly as a human machine, rife with normal psychosomatic errors and aberrant nerve disorders. Not as a sexy, ripe, <laughs> voluptuous, Young lady. Almost immediately, it becomes extremely sexual and physically painful to watch. Whenever shows or movies have some long, obscure fetish scene, I just end up assuming the writer is self-inserting, which makes me hate it even more. It's not even funny. It's just so cringy, it's physically painful to watch. Once that god-awful scene finally ends, and you're thinking, wow, maybe I won't kill myself, you see something very questionable. At first I was like, all right, damn, that's edgy, I see how it is, but my god, it got worse. Much, much worse. This is the way John Kay portrays Africans. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty bad. 
It's not just stereotypical blackface either. He has straight up made them look like half animal, half human hybrids and drawn them as disgusting as possible. Aside from the racist drawings themselves, the way they are portrayed is also incredibly racist. I don't like the looks of that hut. I'll use my x-ray nipples to see what's going on in there. <laughs> there is no punchline either. It is literally just 15 minutes of unironic racism. Typically, edgy cartoons like South Park often satirize racists and mock them, which is amusing to watch. It's fun to watch a character like Eric Cartman because you know he's a horrible person. That's why it's funny. But no, 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 John Kay intends for you to actually root for Hee Hog, the racist sex pest. Nah, man, I'm ready to fire up my grill and have some bacon because fuck that noise. Overall, I think the plot is just supposed to be a classic superhero cartoon, except really sexual and really racist. It's like the boys if the boys was fucking shit and the writers were sniffing lead paint in an alleyway. This cartoon is so shit that if you enjoy it, I genuinely think you should eat the insulation in your attic and humble yourself. To ask what John Kay thinks of this cartoon, according to his blog spot, he hog has the coolest powers ever. X-ray nipples like really, really big man's nipples in Rocco's Modern Life, the power to taste guilt, and super seduction to women. To him, it's a fictional superpower. To me, it's reality. Hogg's only weakness is having marmalade smeared on his ass like a fetish Twitter, even I'm not desperate enough to follow. He also has his villain, Mr. Meat. I forgot if he's in this episode or not. He wants to give Meat voting rights and hates He Hog for not releasing his meat to him. He Hog's meat is enslaved by his skeleton, apparently. I don't understand. I'm recording this at 5 a.m. on a sleep. Mr. Meat controls meat like that Fuzzy Lumpkin's Mr. Meat episode of the Powerpuff Girls, the very first Powerpuff Girls episode. Very original, John. No one does it like you. And if they did, they'd be in jail. Well, like I said, I think it's pretty fucking obvious why this pilot failed. Normally, I try and give the pilots we cover a fair shake and say, well, there was potential. There was no potential. John K. should give up and leave the internet. Let me know what other failed pilots you'd like Pan and I to cover in the comments below, and join me in Pan's Discord server, which is linked in the description, and we will catch you on the flip side. <laughs>